Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the West Shore Farmers. Riley marks uh, the fourth generation of our family ownership. For those of you who don't know, the West Shore Farmers Market is located at 900 Market Street in Lemoyne. As you might be able to see behind me, it's a 60,000 square foot market house. Um, the market is open on Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, and our specialty shops upstairs are open every day but Sunday. Um, I've, I know I've uh, been asked to talk about the history of the market, so I won't bore you with, uh, with an advertisement. Um, the market in, on this very location was started uh, in, in the early 1950s. My wife's grandfather, Ray, uh, owned and operated Garver's Farmer's Market in Hummelstown, and he had done that for years. And in the late 1940s, he decided he wanted to move west. So he purchased the property uh, in Lemoyne, where the market is located now, as well as uh, some property in Silver Spring Township. Uh, for those of you who might remember the old market and the old Silver Spring Speedway and, uh, uh, and flea market, they kind of look alike. And that's because my wife's grandfather uh, developed both properties. So in the late 1940s, uh, Ray Garver, senior purchased this property at 900 Market Street. Uh, at the time it was part of an old airstrip. Some of you have been around for a while or maybe you've been to a barber shop or other locations in the in the Lemoyne area may have seen pictures uh, of the old airstrip. Uh, at this particular location it was kind of a boggy area so they had to fill it in and uh, they built a, uh, a, a, a farmers market. Now at the time, uh, it was billed as the newest and best thing uh, in the area and it was advertised to have 1,000 uh, spots for cars. I don't know how that's possible, but that's what they, <laughs> they, uh, they uh, advertised at the time. Uh, the market had the same hours back then and uh, it was a smaller market at the time. Uh, it was only one, uh, one floor for the market and there were some uh, second floor had some uh, apartments. Interesting fact that that was when my wife was born uh, this was the first place that she um, that she lived. There was an apartment on the second floor of the market so this has been in, uh, in her family uh, for, for that long and it's been part of my wife's life uh, since, you know, since her birth. Um, the construction of that building was all wood. The beams were all eight inch oak beams. The floors were made of wood. Uh, it was a, uh, an old fashioned construction. So the, the, the market opened on April 1st, 1950. And that was again by my wife's grandfather, Ray. Um, in 1958, uh, Ray passed away and my father-in-law, Ray Jr. Uh, came back from uh, Juniata College to run the market. Uh, he dropped out of college to come back and, and run the market. Um, that was about 1958. However, a little prior to that, um, the Chestnut Street Market in 19, I believe in 1955 closed down, 54 or 55, and a number of the tenants from the Chestnut Street Market moved over uh, into the West Shore Farmers Market. Included in that was Kepler's Seafood and L.D. Smith, uh, L.D. Weaver um, Meats. And today, those are two stands that are still with us today. So they, they've, uh, they've been loyal tenants uh, for quite a few years. Um, uh, Ray passed away, uh, like as I said, Ray Sr. passed away in 1958, and Ray Jr. came and, and ran it uh, from 1958 on. Um, my wife Tracy and I became involved in the business in 1994. We moved from Pittsburgh uh, and, and started working in the business. Uh, one interesting fact about the, the, uh, the market is that at times it wasn't just necessarily a farmer's market where the farmers could come and sell their wares or whatever. Um, there was a portion of the market was set up for uh, live auctions. 
and they had livestock auction, auctions, uh, automobile auctions, uh, all kinds of stuff. It was just kind of an empty, empty part of the building uh, that was later converted into uh, a portion of the regular market. Um, so fast forward about, uh, about 40 years, uh, and uh, probably the biggest piece of history uh, associated with the Bush Shore Farmers Market is the fire that occurred on February 1st, 1999. Uh, it was Super Bowl night, and uh, I got a telephone call at about 1 o'clock in the morning from one of uh, West Shore Regional Police Officers that said uh, very casually, Greg, hey, you might want to come down to the market. There's, uh, you got a little bit of a fire. So being Super Bowl night, and there was, as again, there were apartments above the, the market, um, I thought that maybe somebody had uh, thrown a cigarette into the dumpster and caught on fire. Well, as I drove down Market Street, I could see that the, uh, uh, it was, had t the, the night had turned into day, and there was uh, a hundred foot flame coming, coming out of the building, uh, smoke everywhere. Um, and as I said earlier, the building was, was built of wood with eight inch oak beams and we had just put a new rubber roof on the building the summer prior and that kind of held all the, fu the, the, uh, the fire and the heat in until it kind of exploded up through the roof and with all the wood and we actually had a, uh, a coal furnace room where we had a whole lot of coal stored from years and years ago the fire burned for days and it was uh, kind of an interesting thing that uh, since it it was such a high profile fire. Not only was it a huge fire, um, but it was uh, of such community interest because the market was a, um, a gathering place for, for many people uh, in the area uh, who would come here every Friday and Saturday to do their shopping. Um, they, the, uh, the ATF established this as kind of a training mission and sent um, big crews from all over the East Coast to um, try to figure out what, uh, what caused the fire. Um, they, they quarantined the whole area off, shut down Market Street and State Street, um, and spent several weeks trying to find out what the cause of the fire was. Uh, and after all their investigation and all kinds of money, they never were able to determine what, what caused the fire. They ruled out arson very quickly, um, but uh, they they thought they found out the particular area, but they weren't able to, uh, to determine exactly what caused the fire. Uh, so we, at that time, we had a, um, a decision to make whether we should rebuild the market or not. And um, you know, it was rather painstaking to, to, uh, for us to come up with a decision of how we're gonna finance it. Um, at the time, both my father-in-law and I were both uh, diagnosed with cancer. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, still very difficult to talk about that. But um, so in the end, we decided that it was it was worth it. Uh, we had so many customers um, that uh, were were really, really interested in us to, uh, to rebuild the market. I was kind of an outsider that I'd only been in in the, involved in the business for a few years uh, before it burned down, so I didn't really know, I didn't have the, the genuine love of the place that, um, that my wife and uh, father-in-law had or that the customers had. So we decided after, uh, after quite a bit of time that we would, uh, we would rebuild it. Uh, and in the meantime, we had a, um, we owned another building that at the time Blue Cross was renting from us for storage. And they graciously agreed to move all of their, their records out uh, into another storage facility um, so that we could have a temporary market. Uh, so we, Everybody, all of our tenants moved in there and um, we had a pole barn built to the back end of that and uh, we had a small market for about a year and a half uh, until this market was, uh, was, was built. Um, so it was a, 
it was a rather difficult time, um, but as it uh, as it turned out, we uh, we and I'm, and I'm hoping that uh, that our shoppers couldn't be happier with uh, um, with what we've done here. Um, this obviously doesn't have the eight-inch oak beams. Um, we tried to make this market. Um, as similar to the old market as possible in terms of design. It's actually sitting on the exact same footprint um, as, the, uh, as the old market. And we tried to have the outside kind of look a little bit like the, uh, uh, like the old market. Um, we do have eight inch beams. However, you might be able to see that they are, <laughs> they are, they are metal beams now and instead of uh, oak. And we now have, uh, you know, it's, Obviously, we have a, uh, um, a sprinkler and smoke detection system, uh, so that would hopefully take care of any, uh, any issues we may have uh, going forward with that. Um, as I said, the, the market is, uh, is open Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and next week, being Thanksgiving, we'll have some uh, additional hours with being open uh, Tuesday and Wednesday till 4. Um, to uh, make sure everybody can get in and get their, their Thanksgiving turkeys and pies and all their, all their produce. Um, right now we have about 50 vendors um, selling from, uh, from fresh seafood to, to poultry to, to meat to uh, pizza and any kind of food that you might want to eat uh, either here uh, or to go. Um, we, uh, we have a, a, a brewery in here now. Uh, Springgate Winery is uh, set to open actually this weekend. Uh, they're going to be a new tenant selling, uh, selling all their wine. I guess, as many of you know, Springgate is a local, uh, local winery. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, we like to think that, um, you know, this is not only a, uh, a place to come shop, but we think it's a, uh, you know, kind of a community meeting place. And that's what, um, it's, that has been the history of the market. Um, and at, at the time that the market burned down, that's when I really realized that this wasn't just a place for people to shop, but it was more um, for people to come and see their friends and gather and have a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, to, to meet people, um, see their neighbors. And, uh, and to socialize. And I think we try to um, encourage folks to do that uh, you know, here as well. We have plenty of tables upstairs and downstairs. And now that uh, it was a challenge during COVID, uh, we weren't permitted to do that. And we had, had to have people sitting outside, but, um, but now we're, we're, we're able to back to do that again. And uh, we're finding that more and more people are getting back out of their houses. Um, and coming to see their friends and, and sit and, and, uh, and have a cup of coffee. So, uh, thank you for, uh, for listening. I hope I was able to uh, shed a little bit of light on the history of the market. And um, I'm hoping that, uh, that many of you will come and make this a part of your history.